What is a web service? And why is it called a web service? What is the difference between a web service and a web page? Learn this and more about the web in this new episode of Getting APIs to Work. Let's start with a simple question. What is the web? For a bit of context, let's first ask, what is the internet? The internet is a worldwide computer network that connects computers, smartphones, and many other network devices. The internet just connects these devices, and in that sense, it is like the telephone network. It simply provides connectivity. The internet can be used for different applications. Popular examples are email, file transfer, and the web. These applications can use specific protocols. And while the internet just connects computers, these application protocols then connect programs that run on these connected devices. The web is just one of these internet applications. It allows a program running on one computer, the web browser, to send a request to a program running on another computer, the web server. The response contains a web page that is displayed by your browser. And when you click on a link in that page, your browser simply retrieves the next page. That's the web in a nutshell. For understanding the difference between a web page and a web service, let's look at a simple demo. I'll be using a browser to show you what happens, but that's just for this demo. And I'll explain more about this later. When we look at a web page showing the weather, we use a weather service website, find the right page, and then we'll see the weather report. This is called a user interface or UI because it is made for humans to look at. When we use a web service, we still have to send a request and we can do that in a browser. But instead of a web page, we get back raw data. This is called an application programming interface or API because that raw data represents the weather report and you can now program any kind of application to use that data. Let's look at how this process works. For the web page, we enter the address and the browser sends a request in the web's application protocol, which is called the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. This request is then handed over to the operating system to be sent over the network. The computer then sends this request across the internet to the right address. On the other side, the receiving computer's operating system forwards the request to the web server application, which then retrieves the web page from its database. Web pages are using a language called Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML. This HTML page is packaged up in response and sent back to my browser. Now the browser can display that web page and I can look at a weather report. For the web service, this picture is almost the same, but instead of the weather report being returned in HTML, it instead uses the JavaScript object notation or JSON. This raw data is sent back to the browser, which is why we see this slightly cryptic data. But when looking closely, you can see in the JSON structure that the weather data is in there. But it's not very useful to look at JSON in your browser. In practice, web services are used by applications other than browsers. And this is what makes them so exciting. Using a web service, you can do anything you like with the data that the service provides. One simple example is a mobile phone. By using a weather app on the phone, you can still use the weather data, but it can be displayed on your phone in a specialized app, or maybe even in a widget that always shows you the current weather. Let's go one step further. Voice-based digital assistants can allow you to ask for the weather, will still use the same weather service, and then can read you the weather report. Now let's go even further. A smart home can be programmed to use the same weather service, but then can act on that data. For example, by closing your skylights when it is going to rain. As we can see, web services allow you to use the fundamental ideas of the web, but by providing an API, the raw data, instead of a UI, the formatted web page, they allow many more things to be done than are possible with a web page. You may think that all of this doesn't look so complicated, and that's true. But it's also important to think about why the web is so successful and how that fueled web services. 
The web is the first successful global information system. Its biggest innovation was that it was simple and that it was independent of specific computers. From the very beginning, it worked on Windows, Macs, Unix, and other computers. This may seem natural today, but it was revolutionary back in 1989 when the web was invented. The same can be said for connecting applications via APIs. There were ways to connect applications across computer networks, but they were either complicated or they were limited to, to specific technologies. So simply using the web and then using that raw data was very easy and it was revolutionary and allowed the internet to be used as a global platform for interconnecting applications. Web services are a simple thing. They are a way how raw data can be transported by using web technologies. This way, many applications can take advantage of the web, most importantly by using the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. But web services are just one specific way of how an API can be provided and there are many other ways that you can learn more about in a video about API styles and technologies. Many of the things that you do in today's connected world are using web services underneath the hoods. But now that you know what a web service is and how it works, it's a little bit easier to understand what is going on when, for example, you're using your phone's apps. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel. Getting APIs to work focuses exclusively on how API power today's digital world and how organizations can use them to improve their products and their customer experience. Hope to see you soon. Bye.